All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna continue working on our American Elm flat bow, the bow that we took from a, a green live tree to a finished bow in less than 24 hours. Now, in that video, I said I was gonna take it one step farther and try to fire harden this thing to make it even better. So that's what this video is all about. But before we get started into fire hardening this thing, I wanna talk just briefly about why you might wanna fire harden these bows. Now, before I talk about that, I wanna just give a shout out to Keith Shannon and Thad Beckham. Those guys put together a DVD and you can get it on Shannon Outdoors, send those guys a message, get, get in touch with them through YouTube or whatever, but they've got a, a DVD that covers this entire process. Now this video that you're about to watch of me doing this, this is like how not to fire hard in a bow because I think I make every mistake you can make trying to get this done, but it actually ended up working in the end and I was very impressed with the results that I got. But Keith Shannon, Thad Beckham, uh, check out their video, Fire Hardening Whitewood Bows, I think is what it's called. If you Googled that, I'm sure you'd come up with it. But why would you want to fire harden a bow? So if you have ever made a bow from whitewood, you'll know that it, especially in areas where you have high humidity, it has a tendency to suck up moisture. It has a tendency to follow the string and make a relatively inefficient bow in, in comparison to something like Osage or Pacific U. If you fire harden these bows, you can make a bow that will match and oftentimes exceed the performance of a, a very well-made Osage or Pacific U bow. And so we're talking about taking those woods that have always been referred to as second string woods and making absolute killer bows out of that wood. And if you're east of the Mississippi, you've got access to elm, hickory, uh, the hornbeams, different things like that. Using the techniques in the previous video where I took that green tree to finish bow, you can, get, you can go out, cut a tree, start working on a bow, finish a bow very, very quickly, and then use the techniques that we're gonna see in this video and in, uh, in the Thad and Keith's video and make an absolute killer fast, hard shooting bow. So let's get started. All right, so I'm just gonna let that burn down to a nice bed of coals, and then we'll uh, start on the, <clears throat> the fire hardening process. But while that is burning down, I think I'm gonna work on some primitive fishing gear. We're gonna make some cordage out of false nettle and make some little gorge hooks out of, uh, out of some thorns that grow on these little mock orange trees around here. But that's gonna be another video, so if you wanna catch that, stay tuned. So from what I know about this, which is not a lot, this is the first time I've ever tried this, you wanna do it slow enough so that that heat has a chance to penetrate all the way through. And what I was seeing, the reason I lifted it up a little bit is I'm already starting to get color change on the belly and it's only been 20 minutes. So get a little farther away from the heat and uh, hopefully that'll give that heat time to penetrate a little better. So it, I'm not sure how good of a, a, um, a hardening I got on the belly. Uh, it's changed the color, you know, from about here in um, we'll see. It's very lightweight. I think what I'm going to do is just let it sit overnight and rehydrate a little bit. I'm, a, I'm afraid to bend it right now with it being exposed to that much heat. I'm afraid I might have drove a little too much moisture out of the back. So I'm going to let that suck up a little bit of water or moisture and then uh, we'll come back to it in the morning. <clears throat> 
All right, guys, so it's the next morning. Uh, this bow has set in this little cabin all night long, and whatever the relative humidity was, <clears throat> uh, the reason that I did this was just so that the wood would rehydrate a little bit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can string this thing up and get it back to full draw. This is a piece of, um, of bark cordage that I made. I was gonna try to bowstring made out of this stuff, but I think I got a little too thin in a couple of spots. And so I think I'm just gonna use this as a, a primitive fishing line. And I'll try to make another one um, here if this thing actually stays together without blowing up, which I've never done this before. I've never tried to fire harden a, uh, a bow before so this is all just a kind of an experiment I don't know you know just looking at the wood and the coloration of the wood I don't know how good a treatment I got on this the only place that it's really changed the color is kind of right in here and and right in here a little bit and then of course on the handle I think well I think that I had, when I started my fire, it was right in the middle of my trench. And then I took my coals and I spread them to the outside. And so with all that fire sitting right there in the middle uh, for so long burning down, I created a hot spot in the middle. And then when I raked my coals out to the side, I think the ends were much cooler. Uh, and then in, in addition to that, this thing was uh, clamped into a back set form. And so the middle of the part of this bow right in here, that was the part that was closest to the coals and it was also at the hottest part of that trench. And so I think if I do it next time, what I'll do is just start two fires on the ends so that it ends gets hot uh, where those tips are farthest away from the coals and then rake the coals towards the inside. Um, but anyway, we're gonna see if we can string this thing up and just see what it does. Like I said, this is, uh, this is all new to me. Cross your fingers that it doesn't explode. So uh, we we definitely did something. <laughs> we the tiller is all kind of whacked up now. This side, this limb got uh, for some reason got really stiff, and this one's super weak um, comparatively. See if we can straighten that out a little bit. It's a little better, but this one's still still stiff. I'm gonna take I take a little wood off this. Well, it might be all right. I think that straightened it out. Just had a little memory. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing to full draw without it exploding. Now, I don't know if the, this, this part of this limb might be a little stiff, but we'll see. That's it. The, uh, the tiller is definitely off though. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten that out. I think what I'm gonna, get away from there, cow. Got a cow messing with the camera. I think what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> try to, uh, reheat treat this yeah i just don't think i got a very good um my my heat fire hardening didn't do what i wanted it to so i'm gonna have to revisit that see i lost all that back set i mean it's got a little bit of back set but it's got a lot more than it would if this was just raw white wood 
Right, so I built two big fires at the end with some really dry wood. It was actually Osage that I used. And so those ought to make some really good coals. They're burned down and I can, I mean, it's hot. I can feel the heat all the way back, back there. Um, but I'm gonna get these chunks of wood out that aren't yet burned, knock the good coals off of them. And uh, go ahead and just rake these coals out. Now I've got this bow. I, I went ahead and made a different form. Um, the form that I had it clamped on when it was dry and the, the ends, this, the form was too short and so the ends uh, stuck out. Uh, and so I had straight ends. So I went ahead and made another form. Uh, it's got a little bit of a flat in the middle and then some back set in the rest of the limbs. I'm gonna try this and, uh, and see how this works. See if I can get a nice back set over the whole thing. Now that might be too hot down there, I don't know. It is it's putting off some heat. I think I'm gonna just clear the middle out just a little bit. Uh -oh. ah! So it's, I mean, it's already, that's way too close. It's already char in the belly. Uh, so I'm just gonna lift it up and get it away from those coals a little bit. So in their video, they do, they use charcoal briquettes, uh, which is much more controlled than doing something like this. I, this fire, or this bed of coals may be way too hot, um, but presumably um, just by varying the distance of the coals, you can uh, control how much heat's being put on the belly of this bow. But this is my first time uh, trying this. I probably would have been smarter to, to use the briquettes for the first couple of times and just, you know, get a feel for, for uh, fire hardening this stuff. But, you know, I got to do things the hard way. I think maybe that'll work. Even if it doesn't work, that's the thing with bow building. Even, you know, if you try something and it doesn't work, well, you know what? You learn something. So it's not a total loss. Well, not even 15 minutes in and it's starting to rain. So. Uh, oh well, I guess uh, if it keeps on doing this, we're gonna have to start this over again. It sucks. So I've got those coals kind of out towards the ends. I don't really have much here in the middle. Uh, my thought is that with this bow and this back set like this, with this part being down the farthest, that the tips are gonna need the most heat because they're the farthest away from it. I think I'm gonna drop it down a little bit. It's, these coals are starting to cool off. So in Keith and Thad's video, when they did this, they did it for about two hours, but their, their bow stave was also fairly thick. It was an unfinished stave. Since this bow is done, it's finished and shooting and the limbs are already the finished thickness. I think I'm gonna try it at an hour. I'm gonna let it go for an hour and just see what that does. Let's see what this looks like. Getting dark. What I was saying, about the basket that you All right, well this thing's been on here about an hour and the coals are still putting off some heat, but most of them are gone. I've really had to lower this thing down. 
all this charring here, this darkening, I think that happened when I first put it on there yesterday or whenever it was, when it was too hot and I had it too close. It just, um, it didn't really do the fire hardening like it was supposed to. I think it just got too hot too quick and, and charred the belly like that, um, which you want to see a change in color, but it needs to happen slowly over time so that that heat has a chance to penetrate into the wood. I don't think that had a chance to penetrate, but I think what's happening is my coals are cooling down before I really get a chance to drive that heat uh, or before it gets a chance to really change the, the character of the wood, before that heat really has a chance to get way down deep into the wood and, and harden the thing. I think I'm just getting a surface treatment like you would uh, with a heat treat or with a heat gun. And so I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try to get it a little bit hotter this time. I'm gonna try to get it a little bit closer to the coals or keep it a little closer to the coals. As these coals cool down, I'm just gonna keep lowering it uh, until I hopefully get the heat to penetrate deep into the wood. Looks like it's doing pretty good. Been on here about 20 minutes. I lowered it down again, and then I uh, went on a walk, and I shouldn't have done that because I scorched the belly like really good right in here. It's, it's charred. Uh, this one down here is not quite as bad, but this, one's, this one got hot. And so we're just, I don't know, I'm gonna try to string it up and see what it does. Um, probably, probably messed it up if I, uh, if I had to guess, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm tempted to try to string it up right now, but I should probably let it sit overnight. I don't know. I might just let it cool. It's pretty hot right now. I might just let it cool and then um, then try to string it up just for the heck of it. It might be all right. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let it cool, and then I'm gonna put the string on there and see if it breaks. All right, so this bow is cooled down. I just took it off of the fire, uh, trying to fire harden it. Now, I am gonna go ahead and say that what I'm about to do is not advisable. Uh, if you're gonna fire harden a bow, I, the, probably the best thing to do would be let it sit overnight and rehydrate at least a little bit uh, there's a good chance that this bow is going to break, but you can't learn anything unless you're breaking them. So we're going to give it a try. Let me go ahead and stand up. may actually hold together. Put my glasses on in case it does explode. Definitely added some weight to it. Oop, I heard a tick. I heard a tick. Where'd it come from? Ticks are bad news in boat building, usually. Oh, oh, the belly. It was on the belly. That might not be such a bad thing. I'll let this plane pass. I am, I tell you what, I am super impressed with what this elm will handle. I mean, 
I have abused this stave like crazy and it's still holding together. That is just, that's amazing. That is amazing. That's 28 inches. That is, I would not have thought that I could have done that with this bow. I mean, it was just heated up to, I don't know how hot, hot. Hot enough to actually scorch the belly like that and it's still holding together. And I've added quite a bit of, quite a bit of weight to it. Let's see if it's held its, uh, held its back set. It's held a lot better than it was, you know? Um, a lot better than it was. You know, for a white wood bow, that's, that's impressive. Now I think most of my heat, when I was trying it this time, most of the heat obviously was out here where these limbs are scorched. There was very little heat in here by the handle. Uh, and you can see that the limbs, where it got the most heat, it's holding that, that shape that the, of the form that it was um, clamped onto. And where it wasn't heated, that's where, you know, it's not holding to that form. And so I think there, you know, and I guess to wrap this video up, I'm going to be doing other videos on fire hardening these, these, uh, these staves. This is just... Um, you know, my hat's off to Keith Shannon uh, for basically rediscovering this ancient technology um, and, and sharing it with everybody. Um, I am super excited about this. I mean, as far as the bow building opportunities for new bowyers, guys that are just getting into it, you know, with using these techniques, you don't have to go cut a stave and wait around for a year or two years for that stave to, to dry. You don't have to spend a hundred bucks on a on an Osage stave that somebody has cut and dried for you know two years. You can go out into the woods, cut down a hickory tree, cut down an elm, and uh, and start making a bow right then. Uh, that is that's pretty amazing to me. But anyway, this is a very very rough, very rough attempt at heat tempering or, or fire hardening a bow and it's actually worked and like I said I have abused this thing um, which is just a testament to the durability of an elm stave um, and it's actually worked pretty doggone good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just string this thing back up and give it a couple of shots but guys I, I've been building bows for a long time and I don't think I've ever seen any technique in bow building that has me or has ever got me more excited about uh, about bow building than this just the opportunities that it uh, that it opens up but anyway let's uh, I went ahead and I made a a, a, uh, a bark quiver a willow bark quiver earlier and uh, if you guys are interested in that video I'll have a video up on that it's pretty cool it's springtime, so all the bark is slipping. So let's go give this thing a shot and see how it does. I'm, I am speechless. I'm speechless. So I did a video on this bow where I cut a green live tree and made this bow in under 24 hours, under 24 hours from a live green tree to finished shooting bow. And that was impressive enough. But then I used some techniques that was basically rediscovered by Keith Shannon, uh, who's done some video. I think they're on Thad Beckham's channel. So go over there and check that out. Um, where he, they were talking about fire hardening white wood staves or white wood bows. And I used those techniques to take this bow one step farther I was able to bring the weight up on this bow and I was able to make a white wood bow that does not follow the string at all. And you'll see that when I unstring this thing. This thing pops right back to a back set which 
for a white wood, that is absolutely amazing. And I'm down here in the southeast. The humidity is through the roof. It's probably 80% humidity right now. And these bows suck up, these bows suck up humidity, which absolutely, it just robs the efficiency of these bows. But you can see, even after having this thing strung and shooting it, I mean, it just pops right back. That is absolutely amazing. So, go check out uh, Thad's channel. Uh, they've got some videos over there that, uh, that show this more in depth. Um, but you, you're definitely gonna see some more videos from me on this technique as I get better at it uh, and just kind of kind of figure this thing out. Um, but uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next time.